What does the fox say? I don't know. I just know what this fox looks like. And what it looks like is a super dark, almost black chocolatey brown. We're of course talking about a Sherwin-Williams paint color called Black Fox, SW7020. And I really love to talk about these moody dark colors because I feel if you use them in the right context, it could have a dramatic effect in your home. Kind of like a high risk, high reward color. So in this video, not only will I talk about it, but I'm also going to put together a color palette using it that you can play around with in your home or perhaps your client's home if you're a budding color consultant yourself. That'd be pretty cool. It's free color advice, so press the like button because we love that here. It does help a lot. So I feel like I've been talking about light neutrals quite a bit recently in these color quickie episodes, whether it's off-white, gray, beige, a combination of all three, those lighter, subtle colors tend to be more popular because more people just happen to be using them. But I also think it's important to go into some details on the bolder colors out there because not everyone needs agreeable gray in their home. The thing is though, Black Fox is technically part of the neutral color palette as well. And that's because it's not really a super polarizing, vibrant color, but more so just one that is fairly subdued when it comes to its undertones but just really dark. It's actually the super dark version of another paint color called Eder White. And I believe they're on the same physical color swatch at the paint store. They do share that gray brown similarity, but obviously Black Fox has a ton of both, almost to the point where you could call it an off black that leans towards the warm brown side of things. Normally when you combine brown and gray, you get a variation of taupe, but Black Fox takes things into a much darker direction with a 7 LRV. And that 7 light reflectance value means it's only reflecting like 7% of the light that hits it, which is barely anything. Most black paints are around a 3 LRV, so that's not much of a difference between the two. This is an immensely dark paint color that typically would be used in accent form. Sometimes I'll call a color main color worthy, which means it could be the prominent paint color you use inside your home. And then you have your secondary colors, which are really great choices for separate rooms like bedrooms, living rooms, dining rooms. Black Fox is an accent for sure. It's not something that I would urge people to use in most of their home or even in multiple rooms. This is a color that will have more of an impact when used selectively and sparingly. The easiest use case is an accent wall, especially with some of the other colors we'll talk about in a second. But I also find dark colors like this work nicely in a home office. Just make sure that there's plenty of good lighting in there so you can actually see your work properly. The two rooms where I don't see Black Fox feeling all that great, and I don't say that often, is in bedrooms and kitchens. Bedrooms because I've just never been a fan of the cooler browns there. Maybe in the form of furniture, but not necessarily on the walls. And in the kitchen, it's just not a practical color because it'll feel way too dramatic in a space that you wanna feel motivated to cook your best casserole. But really, you'll just probably have a hard time chopping up your vegetables. So if it's not the main color, then what would be in this palette? Well, the first place I would start is a color like Mindful Gray, which is a beautiful, warm, mid-tone counterpart to Black Fox. I would say it has a touch more of a noticeable beige mixed in, which gives it a natural likability to it. It is a mid-tone, so not the lightest color you can go with, but I still think because of how balanced the color feels, you'll be able to use Mindful Gray in a lot of situations with relative ease. If you wanted a gray that was, I don't know, a bit more weird, <laughs> then my next recommendation would be to go with Unusual Gray. I always found this color's name amusing, but I suppose I get where the unusual aspect comes from. I think one of the words they use to describe this on the website is atypical. And that's what it is to me. If you're talking popular neutral colors, the first thing that comes to your mind probably isn't a cyan green undertone gray. You're probably thinking of something more along the lines of mindful gray, which we just talked about. Those warmer, maybe beige leaning colors. But I really like unusual gray's interaction with Black Fox because it does a good job at complementing the brown aspect in it. And it gives you some more opportunity to explore the cooler undertones within a space. I see Unusual Gray being more of a supportive color to Mindful Gray, only because its cool undertone feels a bit more niche, and also it's darker as a color generally, which you do need to be mindful of, no pun intended. <laughs> 
So to speak. Okay, so secondary spaces for this one. What do you do if you want an accent color that wasn't the dark abyss that Black Fox is? Well, you gotta go with Sassy Green, of course. I mean, duh. What an incredible name, first of all. Can we give it up? <laughs> what we're dealing with here is a greeny gold, kind of a chartreuse tan that is extremely exciting and invigorating especially when you incorporate it next to the more muted tones we've been discussing, this color will definitely pop. If you wanted to paint an entire room with it, you're probably looking at maybe a powder room or I don't know, like a fun seating area, a nice little built-in niche perhaps, but it will kind of punch you in the face with its saturation. Even though it's not really a full-on chartreuse, which can be borderline fluorescent looking, this color is more than just a gold tan. It is very dynamic and will probably be suited for those smaller pockets to accentuate certain features within a room, like maybe some built-in shelving or something like that. You know I gotta hit you up with some trim colors next because those baseboards and frames need to be painted painted too, okay? Easy off-white choice would be extra white. This is one of the more stark Sherwin-Williams white paint colors, but what I like about it is the added bit of gray within it to make it a little easier on the eyes overall. My dark trim color choice for namely Black Fox is called Dovetail, which is a soothing, warm, earthy gray that is fairly dark, but definitely lighter than Black Fox. Coincidentally, Dovetail sits neatly in between Black Fox and Mindful Grey, which we talked about earlier on, so you know they're going to be able to coexist. I also went through it in this video while rocking a very questionable hairstyle. Oh, by the way, here's the palette altogether. How about that sassy green, eh? Wow, wow, wow.